All right, welcome back. Just buzzing through the first hour right here. Lots to talk about in the world. Checking in on the markets. The Dow down 140 right now as we speak. Uh, still above 26,000, which is a good sign. 26.5. Under 26, I might get a little nervous. But uh, Bitcoin still raging above 11,000, and I think it's heading to the teens for sure in a very short time. We'll keep our eye on that. Now, um, I have been saying for a while on the show that I almost feel like these protests, which were supposed to be about George Floyd, have turned into a whole nother thing. Black Lives Matter, the organization, is really a front for a Marxist group. Um, And I don't know if you know this, but um, the African-American community accounts for about 14% of the vote in America, and the Latino vote is about 18%. And um, we've been talking about this for a while, how many of these Latino people came here legally, they worked their butts off to get here, they have a tight nuclear family, they work hard, um, they send money back to their families where they came from sometimes, Um, but they're more conservative than anyone realizes. And... uh, Back in uh, 2019, when we were in a normal universe, my good friend and uh, regular Rich Valdez was on, and he was talking about how the Democrats don't really care about the Latino vote. Take a look at this. Floating around that Trump is really doing some real groundwork in the Hispanic community. 18% of the United States population is Hispanic. So I think it's interesting that the Trump uh, campaign is putting that focus there because it's a really big chunk of political real estate, if you will. Now, compared to New York, where we are right now, and as you mentioned, AOC's district, with AOC, that district is 50% Hispanic. 50% of the voters are Hispanic. So with that being said, there's a lot of focus on reaching out to Hispanic voters, and it's a message that's important because so many Hispanic voters tend to be very culturally conservative. So Rich was right on top of things back in October talking about how the Hispanic vote was really with Trump. Um, And now news out that the uh, Joe Biden campaign, his Florida campaign, is suppressing the Hispanic vote. Ninety people on his staff in Florida have uh, signed a letter talking about this. And to break it down even more, the host of the This Is America podcast, My good friend Rich Valdez is here to break it down for us. Rich, what the heck is happening here? So, John Tobacco, it seems that the Democrats think that Latinos are for sale. Let me be the first to tell them. Latinos are not for sale. Hispanics are not up for uh, political prostitution. It really isn't the case. The problem that they face is this. There are generations and generations of people, irrespective of race, that have been conditioned into voting Democrat, whether it's the blue-collar vote and their... Um, kind of shackled through a union, whether it's a teacher's union or other unions, or just traditional Democrat voters. But the thing with Hispanics, with Latinos in particular, is they're always evolving, right? There are new ones that are coming in. There are second generation, third generation that are removed from from, uh, being immigrants, like their grandparents were immigrants, and they realize, you know what? I want to have a business. I don't like paying a lot of taxes. And when that becomes the case, you have a really tough sell when the Democrats are pushing uh, almost full-throated socialism on top of everyone. Yeah, and Rich, this article goes on to talk about how, and I know this hits home especially with you, um, a handful of organizers were transferred from a heavily Puerto Rican part of the state to counties with a small percentage of Hispanics and four or five Spanish-speaking organizers along the I-4 corridor in Central Florida were moved to North Florida um, where there's a lot less uh, Spanish-speaking Latinos. So is Biden's team actually trying to not remind uh, Puerto Rican and Latino voters to get out there, or is it much worse than that? Well, I think it's twofold. Number one is that I think the Biden team is realizing that there are a lot of displaced Puerto Ricans from Hurricane Maria that are in Florida, in Orlando, in Central Florida, and in Southern Florida. And now that they're here on the mainland, they're realizing, you know what? Trump wasn't so bad. I don't know why these people are trashing Trump as much as they do, because they truly have seen corrupt government in Puerto Rico. The mayor of San Juan, for example. So when people have seen true corruption and then they see what President Trump does, they realize, you know what, you you, you can try to fool me, but you can't. That's number one. Number two, I think the Biden campaign is working very diligently to stay away from those Puerto Ricans that they realize, you know what, these guys are going to end up voting for Trump or they're disaffected. Uh, They're not with the Democrats. So stay away from them. And you've got 
Puerto Ricans that are on staff with the Biden team saying, you know what, this isn't right. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm just thinking about grassroots organizing. I've run for some, you know, local offices and stuff. They're taking the, the folks that are on their team that speak Spanish and would typically go into the Latino communities and remind people, hey, you got to get out and vote. Here's what you need to know about Joe Biden. And to me, they're taking those resources and they're putting them area, in areas where they don't need them. So it's almost like they don't want to remind the Latino community um, that the election's coming up. Or I, I don't know if it's something more sinister than that. Well, I think, again, uh, a little bit of each, right? So I think, number one, you're, you're spot on. They don't want to remind these people and say, hey, look, you know what? While social media mm. and, and the left within the media will try and tell you that Donald J. Trump, el trompito, then all this Magnus, has a wicked jump shot when he throws paper towels and that that is the end of the conversation. But so many Puerto Ricans realize Trump wasn't our problem when this hurricane happened. So I think, yes, they don't want them to remember and number two, a big part of it is they don't care. They just honestly don't care about the Latino vote because why? It's never been super reliable. They can count on two thirds of it, 60%. I think as long as they feel like they can get that margin, they don't care to grow it. It's not really about the people. It's all about the numbers. So um, tell me, because you're, you're, you're part of the community. You're, you're, you're a proud part of the community. I mean, you're American, but you, you respect your heritage a lot. Um, why is it that the Latino voting bloc is larger than the African-American voting bloc, but they get absolutely no attention? Why, why is that? And the Black Lives Matter is only 14% of America, but yet it's controlling the entire dialogue. Well, there's an old saying in English, right? <laughs> the squeaky wheel gets the oil. And that is certainly true in politics. I mean, if you look at CNN at their viewership on cable news, they don't have a huge viewership on cable news, but they definitely make a lot of noise. So I think there's a, a big part of that, that that goes with it. I think another part of it is there are truly uh, intrinsic values in our culture that really prevent us from really going full-throated uh, leftist because faith is such a big component. Being pro-life is such a big part of it. Having the community of church, the community of family, uh, congregating together. Th these are all the nuclear family. That may be something that the BLM movement uh, espouses on their website, but that's not something that's going to be uh, accepted in the Puerto Rican community. And one good example, and it's not dead by any means, but the FALN, the terrorists that were bombing buildings, similar to what we're seeing right now, bombing federal buildings, bombing courts, all of that stuff. When you look at that, that those guys went to jail and they were pardoned by Clinton and Obama. But the bottom line of it is that Puerto Ricans, by and large, don't buy into that crap. They just really don't because they realize that since 1898, Puerto Rico has been a part of the United States. And most Puerto Ricans that I know are super proud to be a part of the United States. Yeah, that's the way I see it. And I, I always recount this story that, um, you know, back uh, in September of last year when they had the debates down in Miami, the Democrat debates, I was down there covering them. And... Um, I was going into a lot of small shops, like mom and pop shops, and I had a MAGA hat on, and I was telling the guys, be careful, you never know down here in Miami how, you know, how much they may hate Trump. And one after the next, I was talking to them, I speak, you know, some broken Spanish, despacio and all that, but uh, <laughs> I, I, one after another, they were saying how they love Trump, that, you know, he's, he's fighting for them, and people were recounting how, you know, they came here legally, and they had to go through this whole process. And more and more, Rich, I'm feeling like people who've come to America legally are really disgusted by the whole open borders and, and you know, amnesty for everyone. These people are committed to America and they're proud that they fought to get here. Absolutely. I mean, that's, that's a perfect example. Whenever you bump into anybody who is an immigrant that came here, spent the money and spent the time waiting to become a citizen, to become a green card holder, and then they find somebody that snuck over the fence, cut the line, is getting welfare, is getting whatever. They're always very <laughs> irritated. Who wouldn't be? And it's not about race at this point. It's just about what's right is right and what's wrong is wrong. Yeah, I mean, look, uh, everyone I know that's Puerto Rican, Hispanic, Latino, they're very proud people. And, you know, to take a look at what they went through and then see all these other people, you know, getting a head start or getting a free pass... I can understand why Biden doesn't want to remind them there's an election coming on or coming up because they are more in line with Trump values. Um, but Rich, we got to take a quick break. You're going to hang with us for a few. Um, I want to come back. There's a. Uh, 
talk of a book out there that we're going to get into and lots more. A lot of great things happening over at 77 WABC Radio. Um, where you're a big part of the uh, future there. And uh, we'll get into all that and more. Rich Valdez is going to stick with us. We're going to take a quick commercial break. And we're going to come back and talk about how the uh, tail is wagging the dog right now and why uh, the Latino vote is uh, really being underestimated. We'll take a quick break and come back with more Liquid Lunch right after this.